I have really got to get a better opener than what's up, guys, because everybody else on the internet says that. But hi, thank you for tuning in. It's rain out again. And I got another bizarre update for you. Uh, two of them, actually, which I'm going to make two separate videos. So I'm sorry about not getting one in on January, but a lot of the development that happened last month was on the design front, and it wasn't really visual stuff that I can show in a video very easily. So what I wanted to do is kind of hold off on doing the update video for a couple of weeks until there's a few more uh, visual things to show you. And then I'm also going to go ahead and divide this into two separate update videos. One's going to be this one, which is, uh, you know, kind of more stuff on the art front, the, the front facing stuff. And then the other video will dive into more of the core design concepts and things like that. Uh, for those of you that are interested in that. So yeah, I'll just kind of jump into it. I'll start by talking about how the boards developed since the last iteration. It looked pretty good last time. I was pretty happy with it. We left off somewhere around here. It looks something like this. Hero power is still kind of far away from the portrait. The portraits weren't centered. Gave that feedback. We moved it over to this. This is actually one of the more finalized ones. So originally we had this. This was the kind of sketch I had. So hero power, again, far from the portrait. I didn't like that. The hand was very horizontal and flat here, which I also did didn't like. Um, I feel like having the hand be curved just felt a lot more natural. So after giving that feedback, again, hero power moved in more. This is different variants of uh, just stuff on the board. This little bomb over here is an example of where the end turn thing might be. We have small variations here on the, the corner pieces. And over here, keep in mind, the way the game monetizes is purely through cosmetics, right? It's the least pay-to-win card game in existence because you don't need to open packs to own cards. There's no collection of cards or anything. So the way it monetizes is through these cosmetics and the game boards, which are all fully modular. So this blue line that splits the board in half, that kind of shows you, you know, your half of the board with the stuff that, that you own, stuff that you can reskin, and then their half of the board. So right now, your opponent would have this jungle-themed board, and you would have this pirate board. And these corner pieces are all piratey down here and jungly up there. Here's an example of what it would look like if it was pirate on pirate. These are the old card back arts too. They don't look like that anymore, but we'll get to that later in this video. So this is like an example if both of you had the pirate skin for your board. Here we have both players having jungle. I gave the feedback that I think we should keep the blue line that separates because if we're talking about the default game board, if it looks seamless between the two halves, it's not clear to a new player that, hey, this half is my stuff and that half is his stuff. So I think it'll make it less complicated for new players to understand that, hey, these stores are the ones, you know, I can buy from, and th those stores are my opponent's stores. Anyway, here's an example of pirates on top, jungle on the bottom, different perspectives on the corner pieces, some end turn and rope examples. The rope and the end turn button most likely are going to be reskinned based on what board skin you have. So if you have the jungle theme board, you're going to get, you know, jungle audio in there, jungle clicking noises. You're going to get jungly end turn thing. It's it's going to reskin a lot of things with it. If you get like an alternate hero portrait skin, it's also going to reskin the starting coins in your starting deck as well. So, you know, when you when you choose to reskin something in the game, it's it's basically going to reskin everything in that category, not just one little thing. So this is some end turn examples. The concept artist thought about doing little 3D end turn things like this, but it's not really clear that those end the turn. So probably not going to do those. You're just some other examples of the end turn button. But basically where we're at at this point after giving a bunch of feedback, like I really liked how curvy this hand is. I think that looks really good. I like having the wheel in the middle because when you scroll through your hand, if it's really big, the wheel can turn. Little touches like that are really valuable, I think. So where we're at right now is around here. One thing to note is I gave the feedback that over on these boards, it doesn't really look like these are storefronts necessarily. It just looks like the cards are sitting on a roof. So I had them do a sketch where, you know, these look more like tables. I really like the peg leg on the table. It's a kid-friendly game, so that's probably not going to say rum in the final build. That'll be root beer or something. But yeah, you get the point. I think the little black tarp and the little Aztec tarp here might make it look just a little too busy. It's a lot of loud colors. So I think something like this that's more simple and clean might look a little bit better. But really, I want to make, you know, these stores feel more like stores. As much as I want to go like really deep with it and make it a little storefront with a little goblin dude beckoning you in and all that. It's just, it's going to look very busy if we do that. And I think something like this is just clean and simple. But yeah, this is this is roughly where the final placement is going to be. You can see we have the wheel here. So it's still a little thing that's going to get to turn when you move your cards. Little moving parts like that, I think, make the, the board reskins a lot more appealing. So uh, the hero power is close to the portrait now. We still have a bit of a curve. Overall, I'm really happy with this one. Like, I think this is very close to what the final build is going to be like. 
We still don't know where the rope or the end turn button is going to be. One other thing that's that's going to be a big change moving forward, just from a design standpoint, we will no longer have the neutral coin store at all. I'll talk about that more in the design video. You guys should check that out as well if you're interested in this one. But that, that's really like a relic of archaic deck building games. And because this game is digital, we have a lot of design elements that make that obsolete. So we can just be way more streamlined with the UI. Anyway, this looks awesome. I like the direction. I think we're getting really close to where we want it to be. I had some examples of these corner parts being swapped. Ah, I didn't download them in this folder, but trust me, I have concept art where you have like, let's say, you know, this, this pirate thing here, this pirate wheel cosmetic would be on the jungle board. That's why they have this outline right here, this outline of rocks and leaves this outline of little wooden posts. That's kind of like the border where it lets the, the unit stand on its own and it lets everything be modular. So if I were to include this dock uh, up here on the jungle board, it wouldn't look too out of place because the jungle would just have these posts and then a bit of a sandy beach. It looked good, trust me. But yeah, I'm really happy with uh, where where it's coming along at this point or where it's getting to. I think this is, this is, is getting pretty close to what a finalized board would look like, more or less. I'm still debating on some mechanics that might change the UI. I'll see how complex it is and if it's worth it from a design standpoint, but a mechanic that literally adds a store to you, so you have like a fourth store, or vice versa, a mechanic that takes a store away is very interesting. As you guys might have seen from the, the old gameplay videos a long time ago, we also had some, some cards that covered up your opponent's stores or cards that covered up your own stores. So one thing that uh, might end up making it into the final build that I still want to test with is uh, like a very wide card that covers all three stores, but it's just one card that you have to, you know, get rid of before being able to buy stuff under it. So, so you know, not, not every card will necessarily take up one of three tiles. You know, there's, there's a world where there's a card that takes up two or three, potentially. Again, I don't know if... The mechanic might be too complicated, but we'll see if, it, if it's, it's worth uh, putting in after testing it. Anyway, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the look of it. Let me know what you guys think, what you think could be improved. But I think it's uh, it's coming along. So game board aside, um, I kind of want to talk a bit about the process for sketches. So right now I'm getting a lot of like black and white sketch art. I basically approve it or I ask them to redo it. And, you know, certain cards I just approve on the first go because it's a really good sketch. Sometimes it takes multiple iterations. So I kind of wanted to give examples of what that looks like. There's a card called Chain Reaction. This was the original concept art the artist did. I really liked the general idea. I just felt like, you know, maybe let's make it a little bit more bizarre themed. Let's use these little triangly things because they're pretty frequent in the game. It makes it feel like a, you know, common symbol on that world. So I mean, it's a small change on this one, and then I went ahead and approved this. This is an example of art I really did not like from the old team. This is not, the team that's currently working on the game did not do this. This was from the team that we had do a very, very early build about a year ago. And this was some art that just looked, um, you know, some a lot of the art they did was great. This one I really didn't like. It felt kind of cheap. It's just some gradients. It looks very flat. You know, a guy could have whipped this up given enough time. And I basically asked them to redo this and, you know, how, how would they do Frost Potion in their art style? Because this would look out of place, too, if we used it with the, the new art. So this is an example of, like, a Frost Potion sketch. Again, this is the first draft of it that they submitted, so I just approved this right away. I really like how it looks. It's just awesome. So I've been really happy with a lot of these sketches on the first draft. This is Healing Potion. You guys might have seen that heart one uh, back in the Indiegogo. This is a bit of a different variant. I'm going to try to be really careful with any symbols that get used in the game because as soon as we put this symbol on Healing Potion, if there's, like, a Healing Tome later on, that book better have the same symbol for the sake of continuity. So like, I'm trying to pay attention to as many of those details as I can, but you know, hopefully we don't miss anything. This is an example of like a Phoenix sketch art that I had in the first draft. And I really didn't like this one. Uh, it just looks like a very special chicken. And I just wasn't really a fan of this one. So I basically asked him to give it another go and try to make it look more majestic, more fierce, and came up with this, which looked way better in my opinion. So you can kind of see like, you know, just in one draft, you can see a pretty big improvement, I think. And I went ahead and improved this one. I think it looks pretty good. This was the first draft for Pyroblast. I really didn't like this one. Not just not just because it's a, like a rough sketch. Like a lack of detail does not make it bad. It just it, it didn't feel like this big epic spell, which in the game is what Pyroblast is. It's a very expensive, powerful spell. So I asked them to redo this, and they came up with this one. You guys might have seen this on the Play the Bizarre Twitter, which you should follow for sure if you're interested in seeing updates on the game. I really like this concept art. This is like... The feel of this, just the aesthetic, this is what I want all the wizard art to kind of look and feel like. Uh, I'm a really big fan of this. 
This was a uh, Staff of Lightning. Uh, it's one of the cards that's been in the game for a long time. So I just, I really didn't like the first draft. I thought it was okay, but they could do better. So I asked for a redo. Came up with this one, which, again, like a lot of, it looks better in a large part because there's more detail on this one. But I think just like the layout of the staff uh, looks cooler as well. And you know, I think it's important. So uh, I'm a fan of this one. This was, okay, so there's a card in the game called Void Lord. He's been in the game, I want to say, uh, don't quote me on this, I don't remember the release date, but I'm pretty sure Void Lord was in the game before Kobolds came out, so trust me, I'm not ripping off Hearthstone. I think the concept artist looked up pictures of Void Lord and just, this one, like, was too similar to me, uh, to the Hearthstone one, and it didn't really convey the idea of, like, what the Void Lord is in, in the Bazaar. He gives your opponent a Void, which is a common, like, curse type of item that you put in their deck that doesn't do anything. It's a very, very bad card to have in your deck. So this guy seems like one that would just do damage, uh, if that makes sense. So I asked him to redo it and make it look less like the Hearthstone one. They came up with this one, which just looked more like Vagar to me. This one just kind of looked a little too wimpy. I thought the arms are a little bit out of place. So I asked for one more variant. And they came up with this one, which I think is sick this one's really really cool this is the void it looks similar to the void that it gives them i don't know it looks menacing i think this one's badass so i'm I'm a really big fan of this one so here you know this one took a couple iterations but i think like the third one came out pretty well oh this is void staff this also gives your opponent a void but this is the staff that does it uh this one looked okay i was kind of on the fence on this one i thought it looked decent but i asked for another variant they came up with this one which again has the void thingy in there so i think it's like a drastic upgrade very quickly right it, it didn't take 20 iterations to get to this point this is literally draft one draft two uh, i'm a big fan of this one this is the void card itself this is like the curse that gets put in it's for the sake of context um but you guys can kind of see like the process usually i approve or don't approve of something and then i basically give input on what could be changed or improved one of the things that the game is lacking, and really one of the things that if I did the process all over again, I, I would start with this, is hiring like a world builder, character designer type of person, you know, essentially a writer to give you a, a rough foundation of a story and a world, and then building the characters around that. Because when you, when you build the cards off of the mechanics, that's fine, but you don't end up with as cohesive of a world as you could, I think. So long story short, the characters were very, very, like, rough in my initial draft. It was, like, wizard, vampire, merchant. You know, but in the final game, it's not going to be the wizard class, right? It's going to be wizard -o, the wizard who does wizard things with his wizard stuff, you know? It's going to be, the, like, the person, not the class. It's going to be the, the character that you're getting. Kind of like League of Legends, for example, right? You don't play the archer, you play Ash or Varus. Basically, we've had a lot of drafts of heroes, and this has been a bit of a lengthy process so I guess I kind of wanted to go through and show you guys how that has progressed so just like I basically asked for a bunch of concept arts of vampires and wizards didn't like it didn't like it didn't like it didn't like it I really like this one I asked a bunch of people what makes a good female character and again this is not my area of expertise this is not something I intend to be personally doing but you know I've noticed that women at least um I think men too respond more to realistic female characters in games that are like they're strong but they're not like overcompensating and trying to be like the antithesis of this girly girl type of thing like i think successful female characters in games are closer to something like diva and less some like not really something like mercy you know if that makes sense so um i really like this art i think it kind of just conveys that a little bit more you know as much as you can read into concept art wasn't a fan of this one 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 and we're on to wizards. This one I thought was reasonable. It was a little simplistic. It looked a little generic for a wizard. Uh, that, was, that was my thing I didn't like about it, you know? Uh, when I think wizard, this is what I think of. But if he looks like a generic wizard, maybe the game feels a little cheaper than it should. Or maybe I'm less inclined to be curious about the backstory uh, or the character. So, you know, ask for other variants. I got this one. Um, this one. This one's got quite the nose. This one's a rabbit, which I didn't expect, but that was cool. I love how they just throw stuff out of left field with very little direction. So I just asked for a bunch of random concept art. So I actually thought about long and hard about the rabbit. That one was kind of cool. This one I think is, uh, that's what I thought was reasonable too. Anyway, that was like the very first iteration. This is back in uh, October of last year. We had this. So basically, you know, I asked for, I asked them to go over it again, which they did over here. So you got some other wizards. This one I thought was a little bit too evil. Uh, I think all the characters 
they don't necessarily all need to be heroes, but they need to they need to be likable, or you need to at least like to hate them, you know. And this one's just kind of a generic bad guy wizard, so I don't really think it fit the type of character we're going for. Again, this one just looked a little too evil for me. It's got the same healing potion though, so I appreciate the continuity, same symbol and everything. This one's got some interesting bone structure, but uh, that made me laugh. I like this one. I don't know. He's messing around with candy. That's kind of cool too. I, I like the attitude on this one, but uh, when I saw it, it didn't really strike me as like, oh yes, that's the wizard character I want, you know? Vampire character, again, just different variants. This one just looked too young. This one I really didn't like at all. Too goth. And we were on to the next stage of variants. So again, I haven't really found much I've liked. Out of all these sketches, I really only like this one pretty much. And that's okay. You know, it's a bit of a long process sometimes. So they went at it again. I added some stuff to the mood board, just like stronger female characters, you know, the diva stuff, the, I forgot her name, but the girl from Kill a Kill. You see some of that in these. Uh, again, this, this just looked too young for the character. This looked way too much like the Kill a Kill protagonist. This one I liked a lot. I think this one's reasonable. It might go this route. But from the very, very first sketch, I think the spiky hair one looked a little bit more unique than this one. But they're they're both very good sketches. This We might go this route, too. So the vampire character is kind of starting to come together. There's like, I'm not 100% set on any one of these yet, but... Uh, it's getting closer to where it needs to be, I think, compared to the initial drafts, you know? This wizard is just, I don't know, shroomed out of his mind right now. This one just looks like he... I don't know, I kind of like this one, but it just looks like he smelled something very intense. This one just looks way too evil. So again, I, I really wasn't happy with the wizards yet either. So back to the drawing board, to more iterations. What they did for this time around is they brought in a different artist just to get a different... Because uh, the, the the first artist is good, and she's great, uh, but they just, want for you know the sake of like different drafts, they brought in a different artist. This vampire is a little too much Betty Boop for me. Um, this one's more going in the right direction. It's just not very vampire-y. You know, this is more of like the mercy thing. It's just... Um, but again, I actually kind of like this draft more than a lot of the other ones we've seen. I don't know, maybe black hair or something would make it look better, but I think it's good. This one was fine. It just didn't really strike me as... It didn't, it didn't, just, it didn't make the light bulb go off, you know, so I passed on this one. Uh, this one's a little angry, but it has more attitude than something like this, you know? So, I don't know, I was more of a fan of this one. Again, these are all, like, reasonable, you know? I'd be okay with any of these, but they just didn't really seem perfect. This one has the whole Skrillex thing going on, so way more attitude on this one. Again, like, all these sketches are good, right? This is not my area of expertise, it's subjective, right? Everybody has different tastes. And this is really why you kind of want a writer first. If the writer writes the story, then you do the art around the story after the fact. And instead, we're just kind of winging it uh, with the first couple characters. But I am working on resolving that. And I will hire a full, full-time full writer and world builder. And Well, I don't know about full-time. I don't know. I don't, I don't really know much about hiring that kind of person. But I'm going to do a lot of consulting and find the best person I can for the job. So anyway, on to more wizard drafts. So this one's doing some stuff with a cork. Missing some teeth. This one has... This one's doing something really intense with an eyedropper. Again, I like... I mean, they're all very, like, dwarfy, creepy looking, you know? That, that was really the thing that wasn't really striking me. Uh, we'll get back to that one. This one looked a little too evil. This one's doing some candle stuff. So they're all kind of, like, I don't know, just little Smeagol-looking guys, you know? This one, though, when I first saw this one, I was just like, oh, my God, this is it, you know? The hat makes it look very bizarre -y. He doesn't look evil or anything. He has character. He's doing his potion stuff. When I saw this one, I was just like, oh my god, that's an awesome concept art. I really, really, really like this one more than the 10 other drafts I've seen. This is the wizard, you know? This one made the light bulb go off for me. So maybe you guys don't like this one as much as the others. Make your own game, you know? Uh, anyway, this is the wizard. So that's, that's what we went with. So I had them kind of follow up on that one, and then we're still doing drafts for, for vampires since then. Here's one without the hand, just in case we wanted to use it as a hero portrait. Here's him in his laboratory doing his wizard stuff, flipping pages with magic. Here's him doing some staff things. I like this character. I think it has potential. I think it'd be good to go down this route more. Yeah, we've just kind of been iterating on that. So now that we know what the wizard looks like, that lets us do sketches for a bunch of spells that need the wizard character in them. Because, like, for a spell like Pyroblast, for example, he has his back turned, so it doesn't really matter what wizard this is. But for any of the art that has the wizard, like his face in it or something, or his features, you want it to be the character that you're playing as on the card, in my opinion. At least in a lot of cases. Had some, some more drafts over here. This is like a different take on the vampire. This one's more colorized. Again, I'm not really feeling this one. Like, of all the vampire art I've seen, I still like the one from the very first drafts the most. Here's another wizard art, but 
these all look pretty good. Like, I like these sketches. It's going in the right direction. I think it'll look really cool once it's actually not rough, once it's polished and colorized. In this one, his beard looks very dark, which I don't really like as much. I think we'll probably go with white beard instead. But this looks more like a wizard you'd find in a bazaar rather than generic wizard. I don't know. I just I like the direction of that one a lot. So, yeah, it's going to take some time to find the right kind of vampire, but I think we're getting there. And uh, the final bit of art-related stuff that I wanted to show you guys is... A little bit more of that card back process. So if you remember when we left off last time, we had our first draft of card backs, which looked a lot like these. And I thought they looked okay. They all look very bizarre which is great. You know, they use the diamond thing a lot, very pointy. The thing I didn't like about them is that they had these very thick borders, and it just, they looked very hearthstone a little too hearthstone And, you know, I wanted to just try some different styles just to see what our, what our options are. Even though these weren't bad, I just thought we could do a different draft. So I asked them to iterate on that. I gave some feedback, and we have some different art. And these come in two dimensions. We're probably going to use more of the, the taller dimension. Um, so I really like this one. I like the color scheme. I like the, the geometry of it. I like the texture most of all. Uh, it looks very leathery. It's just uh, it's a great card back. I, I like this a lot more than the previous one. Again, much thinner borders and all of that. Uh, here's an example of a green one. Again, I really like this. I got this sketch. I had to decline this one because that's a penis. We got this one over here. I wasn't really feeling these. I think they're supposed to be metal studs, but they look a bit like bullet holes. I don't think it's a bad looking card back. Uh, something like this might make it in, but probably going to change a couple things about it. I like this one a lot. The wood panel and everything just is a great texture. I think this one looks really good. This one as well. I love how they feel tangible, you know? Uh, you're seeing different elevations in it. You're seeing good texture. Here's one I got that was really just gradients, and I, I like the design. I like how it looks. It's pretty. I decline this one, again, because it's, it doesn't feel tangible. It's, like, it's a different art style. This is a cartoony art style, and again, it, like the Bazaar will have what could be described as a cartoony art style, but everything still feels tangible and real, right? Like, the, the feel of this card back is so different from this one. It feels like they're from different video games. That's why I asked them to go in and, you know, this was the original draft. I asked them to go in and put texture on. So with texture, this is kind of the difference right here to here. I think it feels a little bit more real. I might do a different texture on this one. I don't know if it's a little too crinkly, but I don't know. I, I, do, I do think it's a big upgrade. I would prefer these kinds of card backs rather than these, if that makes sense. Here's a green one with good texture. Originally, it was smooth. And then I had them at it. And again, I, I think it's a big upgrade. So I'm a big fan of that. But yeah, the, I think the card backs are going in the right direction. I, I'm, I'm not super picky when it comes to these, but I, we'll make sure that they look as good as they can because, uh, you know, that is one of the ways that uh, the game monetizes is through these. So we better make sure that they're worth spending money on. But yeah, hopefully, guys, this gave you, you know, some interesting stuff to look at, a little bit of a view into the design process when it comes to art related stuff, at least. A lot of it is just, you know, the team throwing some concepts my way, and then me giving feedback one way or the other, trying to take into account as many things as we can. Uh, but I think the game is coming together well. It has a good aesthetic. I like how things are looking. And if you guys are interested in more of the design-related stuff that's been happening, where, where personally I think that's where most of the progress has been in the last month, I'm going to go ahead and make a separate video for that that you can watch where we kind of get into the gameplay decisions and, and how... I've reworked core rules of the game in the last month and a half. So I really like where it's coming along now. And yeah, if you're interested in hearing more about the game, you should watch that. Uh, until then, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon in another video. Peace.